front. Welcome back to video number two in the building uh, static blog series. And we are uh, in video number two. So number two, we're going to get into uh, building out the actual structure of our website uh, using HTML and CSS. Um, we did the introduction in the first video. So this project is building a static website. Uh, and our goal is to uh, build a website a static blog that's editable without any sort of back-end administration dashboard. Um, you can see an example of it there. Uh, I encourage you to go back to the to the first video and watch it uh, before you get into the rest of the videos in the series. That way you know kind of where we're going and what our goals are and what we're using. So on this um, in this particular episode we're going to build out the structure of the website. So this is the bones and the look and feel of, of each of the website um, posts. So I guess depending on how, I, you should probably just call them posts, that's okay for a feed or for a blog. Uh, so we'll look at creating uh, the masthead which is going to be, it's going to hold the title basically of your website and then also set up the individual post structure or the feed layout. So deciding you know what do you want to include in the feed, uh, do you want links everywhere or do you just you know how do we want it to look how do we want it to present on the page how wide do we want it to be do we want it to be in multiple columns or you know what do we want to do with that for us and for our purposes we're gonna uh, we're gonna create just like I'd shown you in uh, the first video a single column structure uh, going down the middle probably about 800 pixels wide or so and then uh, it's always gonna be centered whether you're on a mobile device or whether you're on a, a desktop device. So these are our goals. First we're going to create the masthead or we're going to create the header structure. Uh, I grew up in, in newspapers so uh, everything like that is called the masthead to me but for you maybe you call it header or um, the title or site title or I don't know what you want to call it uh, but I'm going to call it the masthead and then we'll be talking about the same thing. And then number two we're going to set up the individual post structure or the feed layout. So let's get out of this and uh, the text editor that I'm going to use is CodePen. You can find it at CodePen.io if you're not familiar with CodePen already. Um, you can follow along with me here. Uh, I encourage you to go and set up a CodePen um, account. They're free uh, and you get access to uh, the editor like you see here. Um, and there's also access to being able to blog through CodePen as well. So there's there's some really cool tools. And if you upgrade to a pro account, which is not that much per year, um, just a few dollars a month, then you actually get access to a lot more uh, tools and resources and that type of thing. So uh, it's a really great service. I encourage you to check it out. And what I love about it is that you don't have to go in and set up a whole development environment. It's already set up for you you just add what you want to and then you begin coding. It's just super easy. Uh, I normally do not code in HTML and I normally do not code in, in straight CSS. I use a processor or preprocessor. So for HTML I normally use Pug and for uh, CSS I normally use SAS. So I'm going to show you how to set that up now. You can write this in regular HTML if you want. Uh, I have not done that for a while. Um, if you go to your settings, uh, you have some options here. So with the HTML preprocessors, you could use Haml or Markdown or Slim or Pug. Now I prefer Pug. I really like it. I have it set up on my um, my build system uh, at work and for what I use for individual projects. Um, I use them for projects outside of work. And so all you have to do is check Pug. Uh, if you don't want to use any sort of preprocessor, just leave it at none. Or if you feel more comfortable with Haml or Slim or something else. Uh, it already comes with the uh, viewport. So this is really important for making sure that on a mobile device that the scale of the website uh, zooms in and scales uh, correctly uh, so it's not really far away. So just keep that there. Uh, and then for CSS, they have several preprocessors here. Maybe you're more familiar with less or SCSS. I prefer SAS or maybe like Stylus, I don't know. 
Um, I prefer SAS because it allows me to keep some consistency between the pug and the SAS. Uh, you'll see it when I write it, that it looks very similar. <coughs> uh, you can choose to uh, kind of pull everything back to a baseline by using normalize or CSS reset uh, if you're familiar with one of those. Uh, I always do auto uh, prefixer so it adds all the prefixes automatically to uh, the output CSS. Uh, you could also add some different types of external uh, add-ons for CSS. For right now, SAS is all I need. And then I'm also going to use jQuery um, instead of vanilla JavaScript. So what you can do is you can just search for jQuery. And you can see jQuery.js is the 3.3.1 version. There's also all kinds of, you know, cool um, libraries that you can do. You could do if you need to support something uh, farther back in jQuery. Um, so all kinds of interesting uh, types of libraries that you can run just at the click of a button. But we're going to pull this in through a CDN. And so we're just going to save and close that. That's all the dependent um, dependencies that we need, so we don't need anything else. Uh, we have everything we need to get started. This over here is our pane where we're going to watch the website being built in real time. Uh, Code ping comes with its own uh, browser refresh. So everything that happens in real time uh, you're able to see over here. Uh, you can also go to the live view which gives you a full uh, uh, look at the website as it's being built without the without the text editor. Uh, you could also go to the debug mode which is a little bit more true to life about what it's going to look like on the website. It's not inside of a the code pen shell. It's more like it's being built directly into the browser but it does require that you refresh it uh, automatically. I mean, uh, on your own manually. So um, that is Code Pen. Let's dive in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a few different elements. And one, we need um, we need a header, and the header is going to include the site title. So I'll show you, um, get a look at, at Pug and what it looks like. So you can see that just writing the word header has created uh, the actual tag, the header tag. And then doing dot site title is like class um, of site title. And when I indent, it goes inside of that particular element. Okay, so um, it's, it's very similar uh, to SAS or SCSS, SCSS um, a similar idea. So as you watch me do it, you'll be able to, to be a, you'll be able to tell <laughs> what's going on. So right now these are just, you know, kind of elements. I don't have any sort of actual text in there, but um, what do we want to call it? We want to call it uh, blog feed. That'll be fine. And so we want that to actually be an H1. So it'll be an H1 with a, a class of site title. And you can see that we get our styling over here of an H1. Okay, so um, on the header, I like to do uh, uh, some sort of inner div or inner element. So I'm going to call it masthead inner. And then so inside of header, we have this masthead inner. It's going to be kind of a, an, a wrapper div, I guess, is, is how we used to call it a long time ago. Uh, but that wrapper div allows us to use Flexbox a little bit more um, generously, easily, if we have more than just this uh, H1 in there. If we only had the H1, I wouldn't worry about it, but I'm also planning to put a login button or a login link right there. Uh, so we have masthead inner, and that's going to wrap around everything in the masthead. And right now it's only wrapping around this H1, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a link as well. So we'll just call it login link. And then inside that we're going to have uh, just a, a regular link. Um, and 
And the best way to do that would be to say question mark login. And we'll just put the text login and it should give us our login link here. And I believe whenever uh, we click on that, then it's going to try to uh, go to the root and then add login to the end. Okay, that's the hope. Uh, this is what you have to add to the end of the Mavo um, for Mavo to pick it up and then to kick into the login uh, where it connects to GitHub and logs you in so that you can do your front end editing. Uh, so whenever you create a login link, you just need this to be tacked on to the end of the URL. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't work, then we'll just uh, we'll put in the full uh, URL. It'll be okay. All right, so we have our two pieces of content that we're going to put into the header. Uh, let's open up the CSS, and we'll begin just doing some general styling. First, uh, I know that there's margin that's being put in here by um, it's being put in here by code pen. You can see this moves whenever we put the margin in there. And so the margin is just being taken away. Um, for our header, and let's just give that a an actual ID of masthead. Okay, so and then we're gonna say background color for right now a black yeah and then the color inside is going to be white <coughs> and then um, I need to make sure we're getting this weird um, space up here that's because there's margin on this h1 so I want to take away that margin for now so site title is what we've called it and then we just say margin a margin of zero <laughs> and then that, get, that get, gets rid of it up there so that's a little trick for you uh, now we just need some space in here we need to kind of format this text and that's when we deal with um, the masthead inner um, so masthead inner uh, we could do something simple like text align center. I'm not really into making this like super, <coughs> super designy. You'll be able to do that yourself. Um, so if you don't want something so blah, <laughs> then you can do that. Uh, we're also going to put a little bit of padding on here. So let's just do one rim of padding, and then that gives us a little bit of space. And then for our login link, we're going to create some space on the top of it. So you could do either space on the uh, some margin or padding on the bottom of your H1, or you can do it on the login link. Uh, I have to style the login link anyway, so might as well <coughs> might as well do that. So we're going to say margin top of just one rim, and then that gives us a little bit of space there. Uh, you can use uh, 1M or you can use, oh, that was not what I wanted. <coughs> you could use 1M or, or whatever your, you know, 16 pixels or whatever you want. Uh, one rem is equal to the root M. It's equal to whatever the uh, 1M is set at the root, uh, which for almost every browser, the default is 16 pixels. <coughs> so you can think of one rem as 16 pixels but whereas when you nest uh, rems inside of each other they are still referencing that original root 16 pixels or uh, 1m they're not compounding if you use m's m's compound on the one before that it's nested inside of so just something to remember <coughs> i like um, i prefer the ease of the calculating what's going to happen uh, but if you want a more waterfall effect, then you should use M's. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, the login link, uh, the actual link itself, we also want to color uh, white. And I'm just going to leave. Uh, I'm just going to leave the underline on it. I'm not going to do anything else with it. But maybe uh, text transform. 
to uppercase. So that should give us a nice little login uh, link right there. All right, so that is our basic header. Uh, you can see that all the way through it's going to stay centered. Um, and if we wanted to do anything else with it, like uh, at a larger size, we wanted to do something, uh, we could. We have this inner class that will help us if we, if we need to put more elements out here to the side. We could create um, a, a flexbox sort of scenario situation. Or when you got out here and you wanted the login to be on one side and blog feed to be on the other, you could do that. Uh, so just a lot of options in terms of the way that you uh, design it. Much of this I'm doing on the fly. Uh, I, I have a basic idea of what I want and you know, I've sketched it out but I'm, I'm mostly just I haven't built this necessarily before so I'm just kinda coding it on the fly <coughs> alright so we have our masthead and then we have uh, our second section and that's gonna be the main section so we just actually call that a main and so in the main we're gonna have a section that's called um, feed we'll, we'll call the well we'll call the main section feed and then we're gonna call this a feed group um, and then inside the feed group what we want to have is uh, we want to have a, a feed we want a title which is gonna be our uh, link so if we go back to our example <coughs> Here that I showed you before, um, you know, here we have uh, a feed group, and inside the group we have this title, and then we have the feed text, and then we have a feed button, which is a call to action. Uh, we also have this little um, identifier up here that would be kind of cool to have if you wanted to do uh, categories or that type of thing. Uh, maybe that would be a more advanced application. We're just going to go with the more uh, simple application of this. So what we need is, um, let's just say, in the header is going to be the feed title. And then inside the article, we're going to do a feed text. And then inside the footer, we're going to say feed button. Now we know that we want to put some sort of link down here. Um, you could go with a button, but it's better. Um, it's better to use uh, an A link uh, that's styled like a button whenever your intention is for that to be an actual link outside to a place or to another part of your website. A button is, is semantically used for making something happen on the same page. Uh, but if you're going to navigate to another page, that's what the anchor link is for. Uh, so we can style this to look like a button. In fact, we can just put a button class on it. That way we can easily uh, style that. Uh, it's going to be inside this footer area. And the footer area would be everything. You know, it's like a block. Um, element, a block level element. And then uh, the feed text, we're just going to say uh, P and we'll just put some lorem uh, in there. And then for the feed title, same thing. And we'll just put some dummy text. This is a good chance for me to show off a tool that I made. It's called Meaningful uh, Meaningful Ipsum, and you can find it at um, my name Brian Haffercamp .github .io slash meaningful dash Ipsum, and uh, Leah Varu, she was she was looking for um, a way to have like really meaningful text <laughs> that she could put into uh, her project. So Laurel Ipsum, obviously this is Latin. It doesn't mean anything to most people. Uh, it's very old Latin. On top of that. And so it doesn't it doesn't convey anything whenever you're trying to show it to people. And if you try to use some of the other Ipsum, like funny Ipsum creators, um, they're just ra random words that are strung together that are kind of funny and they're thematic, but they don't necessarily give 
the context or meaning of anything. So <clears throat> in another project that I used with Mavo, uh, I had actually created some stories, uh, stories that are copyright free like Frankenstein and, and they're so old that they're out of copyright. So I published the stories online using Mavo and because I've separated the data from those stories and put them into JSON files, I now have access to that JSON file and I can import that data into any sort of shell. So this for me is like, this is the new web. This is where everything is going. And so the things that I'm showing you today about building a static blog using JSON, these, this is kind of where things are going, or at least from what I can see, uh, where things are going out of your database and into something that can be used all over the web. So I repurposed these first chapters uh, and you can choose any of these stories. These are stories that I have online. But all I'm doing is I'm, I'm reaching into the JSON uh, from, in the, and it's in my GitHub account, and I'm pulling out the first chapter only. And so using, using Mavo, not even using my own JavaScript, uh, but using the Mavo script, I'm pulling it out. Um, so you can read the first chapter of A Christmas Carol. Uh, I think this one has a an image too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So there's even an image in there as part of uh, as part of that book online. Or you could read, you know, the first chapter of Pride and Prejudice, or Frankenstein, uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, or Alice in Wonderland. So uh, you can see that these are already uh, separated out as paragraphs and, and that sort of thing. So let's just take the first few paragraphs of uh, Alice in Wonderland. We'll make that our actual text. That was a really long explanation to get to this, but uh, maybe it's a tool that if you're a developer or designer that you could use. <coughs> so now we have here, we have our actual text that means something, and then uh, we can put this as our our title since it's an actual title. So we'll put that up here and so we have down the rabbit hole. Uh, we need to make this um, we need to make this an H1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have <coughs> our title of our blog post. We have our blog post text and then we have our blog post button. So these are kind of the basics that we're that we're gonna need for our feed group and then we'll just take this feed group and we will um, double it just so that we can get a few more so we can see what it's going to look like whenever uh, we build out all of the different when we have multiple posts I guess is what I mean to say so when we have multiple posts what will it look like uh, so let's get to styling this So the first thing that we have is our um, feed group. For me, this is a little bit too close. So I'm just going to say the feed here just to mark it out. So the feed group is going to be, um, it's going to have a margin bottom of maybe like 3 rem. It's fine, just enough to be able to separate them out from one another. Um, and you can see that we're doing a, a mobile first design here. So this is how you would do it. You would set up your screen so that it, it looks like a mobile device and that would give you um, you know, a more true representation. And the, the beauty of mobile first is you only have to add whatever code makes it look better at a, a larger size. So for us, that's going to be very little, uh, honestly, because this is such a basic um, layout and a basic structure. Uh, we're not, we're probably not going to have to do much or any, um, make any decisions whenever it goes to a larger screen size. So uh, for the feed, let's also get into the main. Uh, it's called feed. We actually gave it an ID. And for the feed, what we want to do is we want to have some padding uh, of one rim and so it gives it a little bit of padding here. Now padding is your best friend 
because it can take it from looking professional to unprofessional. So white space is your friend. Having this works, it does work, but you can see that there's, it's not always easy to read and it's not gonna be very easy to read when it's right up against the edge. So help your users out, give them some white space, create some space between these things so that it's easy to distinguish one post from another. Uh, there's a place at which you have too much space. There's a place at which you have too little space. You look at it and you decide, okay, that feels about right. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's based upon how it looks, how it feels to you. Um, so just, that's how I go with space. That's how I think you should go with space too. Um, we want this to be, right now you can see that, woo, the line links are way, <laughs> way too long. Uh, no one wants to sit and read this, so we're going to cap out the line links at, um, let's say, let's say 700 pixels. How about that? So this will be 700 pixels right here, and this feels like mm, maybe, maybe 600 feels better. Maybe 600 feels a little bit better uh, if we're going to keep the the font size right there. So let's cap it out at 600. So we say the maximum width of this particular element of the main element is going to be 600 pixels wide. And then you can see what happens is it just stays there. So maybe that's what you want all the way down the left side. That's not what I want. What I want is for it to be centered. And the way that we do that very quickly is we can just say margin auto. And then that gives us a nice it always stays in the center. Let's see, so we have this centered, and then we have this centered, and then uh, for the actual post itself, we have a left align, which makes it just easier to read. Um, and then it's also responsive whenever you go down. Uh, this is a good time for me to point out, uh, HTML is already responsive, so if you're new to design or new to front-end coding, you don't have to do anything to make HTML responsive. It was built to be responsive, and whenever we add things to it in the CSS, we break the responsiveness. So anytime you add layout, uh, floats, uh, even you know some ways CSS grid and, and some other things, Flexbox, we take away some of the responsiveness of the web, of the HTML. And so when you, when you begin adding arbitrary widths and, and different things like that, you're breaking the natural flow of the text. So whenever you add those things, think I'm breaking this and then you have to go back and fix it. If you do a mobile first representation, then you don't have to go back and fix the things that you've broken, at least for you know many screens. Uh, most screens are going to just you know get the responsive text and you haven't had to do anything. You can see here even if this was all that I produced, you know, this is good enough, quite honestly. You put a nice font on there, and that's really all you need. And we haven't done anything to break the responsiveness of this, per se. So, uh, that's my little lesson. Do as little breaking as possible, uh, because then that's, number one, less to maintain. It's less for someone else to figure out. And it's also faster. It makes your code faster because you're just not adding as much code to everything. To my mind uh, here, this is all fine to me. All the defaults feel okay to me. Maybe you want to close up this space and you maybe want to put an indent. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, this is very acceptable on the modern web. And so the next thing that I think we need to do is to do the feed button. So let's get down here and um, I called it button. And so what I'm going to do is say, uh, I'm going to take the text decoration off of it because it's a button class and it's not, um, not a regular link. So text decoration none takes away the underline. That's not always a very good uh, accessibility uh, type of thing to do with all of your links. You want people to know that it's a link. Uh, keeping the blue um, keeping the blue color for your links is good, but 
people are going to know that this is a link because it's a button. But if I had regular links, I wouldn't take the underline off of them necessarily. So uh, let's put a little bit of padding. You're not going to be able to see it yet, but you'll see the button move. And then let's say the background is going to be uh, black as well. Uh, so now you see how our padding has affected everything. It's really important for you to give your buttons uh, a display um, value. So either inline block, let me see how it moved the button. Because normally, especially if it's an A, uh, an anchor link, an anchor link is not a uh, a block level but uh, a block level element. An A is a an inline element. So A is always inline so that you can add A links to a sentence or a markup and it doesn't break everything. So because an A, uh, an anchor uh, tag is not block level, you're not going to be able to style it with margin and padding in the same way. So to make it behave like a, a block of text, we can do two things. We can either put uh, we can use this feed button um, class, which I've created. It's like a, this footer is a block level um, element, or you can just put that all of your make all of your buttons uh, either block or inline block. Uh, if you make them block, you can see here that it takes up the entire uh, block level of the element, so it's filling up all of this feed button block. But if you go back to an inline block then it only takes up the space right around the actual link itself so it kind of shortens it all up. Uh, let's leave it an inline block and then let's call the color oh, not too high but white. So we'll call the color on that button white and then now you can see that we have uh, a nice link here and that when we click it nothing happens yet because we only have this little hashtag on it. Um, so this styles all of our buttons and <coughs> the reason you might want to have a button would be a link off to something. Uh, for my own personal case uh, I've created just kind of a little teaser text and then I have a link you know that goes out to the actual article itself. So if you don't need that, uh, you can always, you know, you could remove the button and what you have is just, you know, you're just writing posts. Okay, so uh, you decide what you want to do and uh, how you want this to be for yourself or for others and then uh, just include that in. Okay, so this is our feed. It looks pretty good to me. Um, maybe we could put a little bit of margin on the top of uh, one rim and then this will move the button down a little bit give us some space. Uh, you could also put that on feed button. Oh, You could say if you want to kind of keep things a little cleaner and keep the uh, keep that off of your button itself then you could do the same thing uh, by adding some margin top to the feed the feed button nope not 22 but 2 okay so you can do the same thing uh, it already has a, a margin I guess of, of 1 so you just add 1 to that and you get a nice little button maybe you want to do more uh, on the bottom and separating those um, those two things out. You can see how it creates more of a, a sense that all these things are together and that they're not running into one another. Uh, feel free to do that. Maybe four feels good. Okay. Let's go ahead and save that and this is how it's going to look um, if we go to what it would look like without the code editor and all that. So we have our blog here and you know, it's passable, it's, it's acceptable at this point. 
So I'm trying to think about if there's anything else that we might need here. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to add um, how to add Google Fonts using uh, CodePen. So let's go to Google Fonts. My slow internet. Okay. And we're just going to go with something kind of trending. Actually, let's go with the serif. Um, what do we like? Uh, we like something kind of modern. about here. So we'll add the regular. Uh, it's called Volcorn. So you can see down here uh, that's not what we want. We've added uh, Volcorn regular and let's say Volcorn uh, bold. Had some issues here lately with the uh, Google fonts and the website. So we'll just do the regular and the bold. That's all that we really need right now. Uh, you can see that the load time is still pretty fast. Uh, we only have two weights and one uh, one typeface, one font. So let's. I'm just doing Control C, and I'm copying this uh, link, and we're going to add it to the head section. Now, when you're in uh, code pen there doesn't look like any way uh, to do a head because you don't have to to do all the head uh, information up here with title and all that kind of stuff that happens up in here uh, so you go to your settings and if you click on HTML you can see here that this is stuff for the head and uh, whenever you want to write um, whatever you write in HTML in the editor goes inside the body tags so if you need things in the head then this is where you put all the things for the head part of the document so we put our link straight in there like that in the, as the HTML we save it and then now we can use our CSS uh, declaration so when we go into our CSS we could just do a simple uh, on the body we could do the font family Okay, so now you see that it changes everything uh, all through the body. So that'll be fine for now. Um, I would prefer something maybe, well, I can't deal with that. I'm a designer and so I need to get in and do something else. So I'm going to do a sans serif and just kind of a, a common a common sans we have kind of a squatty X height here so let's look for something that's a little bit more squatty on the X Lato would be good um, Muley would be good what you don't want is kind of a tall X height see these are these feel kind of tall to me uh, so we're just gonna go with something very kind of short. Let's just do a PT sans. How about that? And just in case we have some sort of bold, <coughs> we'll add that too. And so now what we have to do since we've updated our Google fonts, we have to, to copy this link again because it's also added PT sans in there. And we go back and then we just overwrite our settings here in the head. And we save it. And then we can come back and we can use uh, PT Sans as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that for everything. So this is, and you may prefer this over the Volcorn. And then I'm going to use this Sarah for all of the header elements. So So now we have um, 
a little differentiation between those two things. Okay. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. I don't know. It, it feels better to me. Uh, I would do more with the, uh, the line height here and space it out a little bit, but this is really just a demo not to create a full design product on the back side, but to learn how to um, how to bring Mavo into an, um, a website and, and appify it, essentially. OK, so right now we have our information. This is what our site looks like. So we can scroll through our different posts. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to um, learn how to connect this to Mavo. So right now we have static content and what we want is for this content to be dynamically created on the front end. So for us to be able to just click in the browser window and update or add a new post or move the posts. Um, and then when we save it, we want to be able to save it to a back end that's out on the web in the cloud so that regardless of where we are, that data will be brought in. So uh, that'll be for the next video. And um, thanks for watching. Leave any comments uh, in the comments section uh, that you have. And I will see you next time.